Next we're going to look at the port of entry for passengers on the Titanic and see where what the survival chances were for each of the uh, uh, groups of passengers, groups of people that boarded at each of these three uh, ports of entry. We can actually do this very, very easily. Uh, now that we've already done it for men and women, we can just add in a new column variable here, the port, and hit run. And everything's going to be given to us automatically because we want to do the exact same analysis, just replacing sex with port. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Our first half of our output will be the same as it was for the sex analysis before. But below that, we're now going to have the port analysis. Looking at this, um, well, let's look at the, the raw data here. For the people who joined the ship at Cherbourg, 120 died, 150 survived. The ones that joined at Queenstown, 79 died, 44 survived. The ones that joined at, at uh, Southampton, 610 died, 304 survived. Um, I don't know about you, looking at those raw numbers is a little bit hard for me to process. The graph down here makes my life a little bit easier. So for the people who joined at Cherbourg, again, it looks like most of them survived. For the people who joined in Queenstown and Southampton, most of them died. So it looks like survival status was not independent of the port of entry. And so we expect to see a significant test of, for uh, independence here, rejecting this null hypothesis of independence. And again, that's exactly what we see. We've got this p-value here of less than 0 0.001. So there's a less than 1 in 10,000 chance of seeing a pattern like this if it were truly, if your chance of survival was truly independent of the 